part of our day. It's a wonderful, exciting, you can imagine, you know, not about the day. That's very possible. And we'll start with the French Sardon. He's Dean of Students, the Open University of Israel, Director of the Center for Information, Documentation and Research on North African Jewry during World War II, and founding editor of a series of books on Jewish communities in the East in the 19th and 20th centuries at the Bentley Institute for the Study of Jewish Communities in the East uh, in Jerusalem. His recent publications include a preface and annotation of the Journal of Clement Turi, uh, the occupation of Tunisia by the Axis Army, November 20th, 1947 to May 7th, 1943, and uh, appeared in 2013, and the article in Hebrew on the Jewish community of Fox during World War II, uh, appeared in Termin, and there's another thing in French, please excuse me for that. <laughs> Hans Adon will speak about memories during and just after. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for this exciting uh, uh, workshop. Thank you, Samir, thank you, Professor Bandera, for uh, organizing this uh, conference. Uh, uh, my uh, presentation is really part of uh, uh, work that I'm working with, a book that I'm working about North African Jewry during the Second World uh, War. I want to thank the Klein Conference, the Israeli Science Foundation, the Foundation for the Memorial de la Shoah for supporting this uh, research and also my uh, staff that are working with me, Tamar, William and uh, Ofer, uh, writing memories about the uh, historical events in North Africa was not so very uh, common phenomena in the history of the North African Jewry. Historical events were discovered mainly in poems, in lamentations, liturgical poems, rabbinical responses, and uh, etc. But as far as I know, and uh, you know, I saw what Professor Yusuf Shitwit uh, wrote about this uh, phenomenon, uh, from the 12th century to the 20th century, there is only 100 poems that were written about historical events in North uh, Africa. But most of those descriptions, most of those poems, are not, uh, do not have a personal aspect in their uh, writings. In the colonial period, we are aware to relatively less literary descriptions of the historical uh, events. I can give some uh, examples of descriptions in the past, lamentation about the attitude of Moulay Yazid in Morocco, Moulay Yazid Amazid, uh, the, the bad man, Chesed <laughs> Leumi uh, from Algeria from 1805, uh, about the massacres of the Jews in uh, Tunisia, in Algeria the program in phase in 1912 and 1944, 24, and there are special poems that were written to special what they call miraculous victories, victories in, uh, in North Africa. All of them are known as the uh, uh, liturgical uh, poems, uh, in Hebrew we call it Piyutim Mi Kamocha. So memories about uh, uh, of Jews from North Africa during and just after the war, some general characteristic about what I'm going to speak uh, uh, in, to, to present in my presentations. First of all is the amount of such publications. The second, part, the second thing is the variety, the variety of those uh, publications, the timing and the content. And what we see from the context is that the Xi regime was relatively uh, given less attention in those uh, publications, I will try to explain why. And you can see the personal aspect of those publications just in different of what we saw in uh, the past. So what was the amount of those uh, publications? In total, we are speaking about 41 uh, uh, publications that were published during and after, just after the war. I'm speaking about the period just before the independence of those uh, countries, it's mean 19, uh, 1956. Uh, we have 25 from Tunisia, 9 from Morocco, 3 from Algeria, and we don't have uh, any point from uh, Libya. I'm not sure that we don't have any point from Libya, because there is one that I'm not sure uh, uh, about. So, but there are questions that we should be asked about those uh, 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 publications. Uh, 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 
what's, what's the meaning of this? Is the, the, the situation in Tunisia was the worst in all North Africa? Or that the Jews of, of Tunisia suffered more than all the Jews? Because we know that Libyan Jews suffered not less than what suffered Jews from uh, Tunisia. Why did it grow? We'll try to see uh, later. What was the language of, of those publications? Nine were written in French, three from Algeria, and six from uh, Tunisia, two in Hebrew, and 30 in Judeo-Arabic. Most of them from Tunisia, part of them nine from uh, Morocco. So what should be the conclusion of those, uh, 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 of those uh, numbers and those languages of uh, using for the publication? Is that mean that the lower classes suffer more during this period? and they could express themselves in Judeo-Arabic, or that there was something that the Judeo-Arabic at that time was more popular than other language as French or the Hebrew. Hebrew is certain in French, I'm not uh, sure about. Perhaps it's easier to express feelings in Judeo-Arabic than uh, in French for the lower classes, if it was really the lower uh, classes. And something that is very impressive from those uh, uh, data is that uh, most of the publications in French were written by the leaders of the communities. Only two of them were written by what we call the ordinary men in North uh, Africa. What was the time of those uh, publications? Three were published before uh, the war. The three came from uh, Tunisia, published in Tunisia. Some were written during the war, but were published immediately after the, the war. Some of them were published, I know that they were written during the war, but published in the, in the, in the, 20, in the 20th century. Most of the publications were published before the start against the independence. And it's very important to, to express, to perhaps understand it for the next uh, uh, presentation. So what do we know from uh, Morocco? So from Morocco we have uh, uh, nine uh, publications. Most of them is what we call the Casida or something like a scroll, a, a Jewish scroll from Purim or from uh, uh, Passover. It's approximately the same uh, thing. Uh, some of them as this one, Casida de Hitler. We have two versions of this uh, Casida that were published in Mogadou. We unfortunately do not know uh, yet the names of those who written those uh, uh, Casidas and uh, we don't know even the, the exact date the, when they uh, published. Uh, Haggadah, the, the Hitler, another uh, time the author is uh, not, 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 don't know. Uh, the Nisim Ben Shimon here is the publisher, is not uh, Shimon the, the barber, yes? Yeah? Shimon oh, Confer, yes? Yeah? Yeah. But uh, we have uh, another thing uh, to Roma, uh, Roma and uh, Italia. This talking about uh, uh, the Italian fascism and the connections between uh, Hitler and uh, Mussolini, and that I mean Judeo-Arabic and part of it in uh, Hebrew, Casida uh, del Guerra, it means the uh, story of uh, the war, it was published in uh, uh, Rabat, and that time by Simon uh, Kofo. Here we have, it's the only uh, uh, publication that we have caricatures that telling the story of the war as he saw it, and they have numbers of those caricatures. I don't know why he puts the number, the exact number of those uh, caricatures, and it show, of course, uh, Mussolini and uh, Hitler and how they lost lost the uh, the, uh, the war. Uh, another one is Mika Mochala Hitler, the story of sorry, the story of the uh, the, the war. And another time, uh, this was published in 32 pages in Hebrew. That's the only one uh, in Hebrew. It's the winning, the win uh, of the Allies and the Russians, uh, the great Russians, on the uh, on the Germans. So, if we took all those publications from uh, uh, Morocco, I think that we can have some characteristics that are interesting, are very interesting. They were all published after the landing of the American in uh, Morocco. None of them was published before. Second, the landing of the American was described as a divine miracle. That means that we are part of this uh, miracle that was in uh, Morocco. Also, that we know that the situation of Morocco Jews is not mentioned. And I think that it's related to what we talked this morning uh, uh, on the subject, why we don't know about the suffering of Moroccan Jews during this uh, uh, period. We are not told about it in any description that I know uh, about. 
the theme of most of the poem are the war and the lies and the lies and achievements. Not, nothing about the war in North Africa, nothing about the war in Morocco, nothing about the sufferers or what happened to Moroccan Jews during this uh, period. Only in one, what we call the Haggadah of uh, Hitler, there was uh, some related to the battles in uh, North Africa in general, but not really uh, 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 it was not uh, in a large sense. Uh, the Zionist idea we talked about in the previous uh, 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 lecture is very marginal and, pre and presented mainly as a messianic redemption, something that happened now in Morocco, and we should regard and sh should look at, at it as a messianic one, but not a, a, a greater thing. The most important is the glorification of France, of France, and the ignoring from Vichy government in Morocco. As you know, they were all uh, uh, verified by the censors in uh, Morocco, but they didn't relate it to what happened in Morocco. Even not a word about Vichy government in Morocco. Only once they uh, mentioned the, the names of uh, Pétain and the de Pétois, but not more than this. Why? We have to think about it. What we know about the publications from uh, Algeria. We have the first publication that was in August 1943. It is just a, a, a few months after the liberations of Tunisia from the uh, Nazi occupation. It is about uh, uh, six, seven months uh, after the uh, market of the Americans, of the Allies in uh, Algeria. And we see here uh, publications of uh, Jose uh, Cohen Jose Abolke, they talk about the participants of the Jews, not of the Jews, of the Algerians, in the what we call now la résistance française dans les éléments de, dans l'Afrique du Nord. That's in the resistance, the, the French resistance in the uh, events in North Africa. But he's not talking about Algerian Jews. It's very important to say. And the first time that he's talking about the subject, it's, it's nothing about Jews, even his origin as a Jew, even the origins of all uh, his other uh, companion in this uh, group, where the, the, the question of uh, their Judaism is not mentioned in this publication. But it's important to, to understand, to try to understand at least, uh, why he wanted to publish it so early after the events. Why he didn't wait one year, two years after? And just after, in, in September 1943, they are uh, creating the group of uh, the group, the associations of the 8 November Liberation Associations in uh, in Algeria, with the names of all those who took part during these events, uh, very important events in uh, Algeria. This will be one of the most important. Uh, 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 stones, milestones in the memory of Algerian Jews, and the battle, the, the debate between whether it was it was a French uh, uh, resistance or a Jewish resistance is still existing till uh, today. And it's very interesting to see that even uh, even uh, Michael Ansky, that wrote the book, the famous book, first books about uh, Algerian Jews in. Uh, in 1915, yes, he used the source of José Abulke. Most of what he wrote is what José Abulke wrote in this Le Cahier uh, uh, Francais. That's me, and it was published by the Le Centre du Comité Juif Contemporain uh, uh, in, in Paris. That means that he used this, and it was important for me. For him. Even what he did in the, the chapter regarding the education system in uh, uh, Algeria during this period, was based on what we'll see in a minute on page vécue of uh, Maurice Eisenberg in, in, uh, in uh, Algeria. This is Joseph Bouquet, the book that he wrote uh, two years uh, ago, about 8 November 1942, 700 pages of a uh, book, very important book, but the chapter regarding uh, uh, Algeria is very little, very small in this uh, big and important uh, book. Uh, the last one is Page Vicky of uh, Maurice Eisenberg, who was chief rabbi of Algeria during this period, and all the book concerning the problem of the educations in uh, Algeria. It was uh, what he did during this uh, uh, period. Unfortunately, I don't have the first page of the, the book, but it's, uh, not, it's not uh, really something uh, that we should... Uh, that it's not something very important to see in the first page, but it was the basis of all what was written after this about what happened to uh, the Jews. So 
what we know, what are the, the most characteristic in uh, the complications from Algeria is that the Shia regime was criticized mainly because of his, its racial law regarding education, not more than this, not the question of citizenships of in, uh, in uh, Algeria, uh, the underground activity, the resistance, and there is something very interesting is the, the book of uh, uh, Felix Shish, Live Door in the Source. It means uh, the, the publications of the names of all those who died for France. Yes, not only in, in North Africa, but also in Europe. That means that for the first time, the Algerian Jews know about what really happened to them. They died for Algeria, for France, during those uh, combats. And uh, Jews' daily uh, suffering during the Vichy period was not mentioned. It seems that it, also it was uh, more than two years for, for the Algerian Jews, and they suffered from Vichy uh, uh, laws more than other uh, uh, communities in North Africa. It was not mentioned in those uh, publications. From Tunisia, we have a lot of uh, publications. We have those that were published about what is the situation of German Jews in German in 1933. Uh, another one in 1938, it's lamentations about uh, Hitler, and he will have the same face as Haman from the school of Esther in Purim had at that uh, time, and the comparison between both of them is very long. And then we have some other uh, uh, lamentations that were published uh, after uh, the, perhaps written during the war, but uh, published after uh, the war. Most of, the most of important is the songs, the lamentations about those who were killed under, under the German, uh, this is the, the, the lamentation, those who were, um, those who were killed under the uh, German regime, in uh, Nazi regime in uh, Tunisia, and the songs of Hamus, Jana Hamus, it's the Hamza, the, the, the uh, the symbol of, of Hamza, it means that the American came and save us from the Nazi uh, occupations. And we have a, a special uh, book that was written by a, a Jew uh, that was that his brother was killed under the, the Nazi uh, regime. And for the first time, he is publishing the names and the photos of those who were killed under the Jews uh, under the, the Nazi uh, regime. And it's very important because. Until this time, it's 1946, no one knows who really died during this period. And for the first time, we have also the pictures of those, the photos of those uh, Jews. We have also Jews that wrote uh, uh, diaries during this period, but were published, we found it in our research uh, uh, three years ago, and we published it as a, a booklet. This is in Hebrew, but we are going to publish the uh, French versions of this. Uh, book. He wrote every day what's happened till November 17 to May 7, what happened in Tunisia, what he really uh, uh, fe felt during this uh, period. And it's the first time that we have something that an ordinary man wrote during this uh, period. And this, this is his handwriting, and I took only the day of 9 December, and that, as you know, it was a very important day in Tunisia during uh, the Nazi occupations. We have two very famous uh, books, the uh, diaries that were published just and some months after the, the war, the Robert Bourget diary about the, uh, his acti the activities of his father, Maurice Bourget, uh, in the committee uh, that was in uh, relations with the, the Nazi in uh, Tunisia, and we have Paul Gay's uh, diary. Both of them are similar in, what, in the way that they describe the events in North Africa, but there is differences between the way that they see the events in those uh, 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 crucial days in uh, uh, Tunisia. But that means that they wanted to give something to the, pub to the public, to the Tunisian Jewish community, about how they uh, 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 saw the, this uh, period. This is the only photo that we have of the leader of the community, uh, and of the Jewish, Jewish community leaders in uh, Tunisia with the famous rabbi Chaim Belaish. Uh, uh, what are the characteristics from this uh, period? The Nazi occupation of Tunisia was described from all the aspects of its life, uh, of its life and just uh, try to, to, to say something more about this. And most of the publications are in Judeo-Arabic. Uh, only, as I said, three of them are 
uh, in uh, French, and there is a very, very personal aspect in those uh, descriptions. What is the aspect of this period? Uh, the community leader, how they conduct the community during the period of uh, the Nazi occupation. Uh, I think that the most, uh, the, the one who blamed them very, very strongly was Albert Memmi in 1953 in his book, La Statue uh, de Say, when he said, okay, if you did it, what you did, if you did what you did during the war, it was only because you wanted to rescue your children and to give the lower class children to go to the camps and, and and it was during the period that they were still alive, it was before the independence of uh, Tunisia. The Shi uh, period was criticized only by Albert Memin in his book, and there is a very uh, strong criticism in, uh, in his book. Uh, for the first time, we have uh, information about the labor camps, where they were exactly in uh, Tunisia, and what happened to the Jews during the, the stay at the, those uh, camps. And, uh, and for the first time, we know much more about the suffering of Jews. I think Jews and all the population from the bombardment of Tunisia during the six uh, months period of the Nazi occupation in the Kremachorin diary. We have, uh, every day is talking about today there was bombing, but today there was no bombing. In the evening there was bombing, in the morning there was bombing. And he's talking about it. We know something about the daily life of Tunisian uh, Jews, and the, uh, as I said, the personal point of view of the events. So, to go to the conclusion, certainly the, this period was described extensively by the community leaders and ordinary men. This period was a turning point for the Jews in North Africa, and I think it's for the most important that if you are uh, trying to look about all the period of from uh, 1939 to 2015, and to see how the collective memory was modern in, uh, uh, in the years, what are the stages of the modern of this collective memory, I think that this is the formative uh, uh, is of trying to model the collective memories of the uh, period. The leader of the community wants to give their the, uh, perspective of uh, their per uh, perspective of what happened and how, what, why they did what they did during this period. It was very important for them, for the uh, uh, for, for, for the history. But what is most important and what is more amazing in my uh, attitude when I try to see all those uh, uh, data that I have about those publications is first of all that we have a lot more. We know, we are aware of a lot more uh, documentation that we published uh, or we didn't get it uh, yet. I know about two uh, diaries that were written about uh, Tunisia uh, during the Nazi occupation, but unfortunately we didn't arrive to, to have them in our uh, project. And second is that uh, when we are trying to read the romance and the books that were uh, written by Jews in French, from the immigration from those uh, Jews to France till those days. And we have more than 100 romans that they wrote about autobiographies and romans that they wrote about their life in uh, North uh, Africa, mainly in Tunisia. The period of Second World War is relatively less mentioned, and the period of the uh, what they call the Deshiru, yes, from North Africa, the demise process of those of, of their life in from North Africa is more emphasized in those written how, how we live. It was, was more important than this uh, period. So this is important, uh, but we should see it in a uh, larger perspective. Thank you all. Well, thank you very much for this amazing uh, amount of amazing documents. Uh, I think they raised a lot of questions, and you uh, referred to some of them. but. Let's open up some. I, I, like, I don't know if this is a question, but I'd like to <laughs> add a little information and that may relate back to a discussion this morning. Um, the, the, the Jews of Libya had their own struggles of World War II, but I want to tell a story of something that's just uh, two years old which relates to the final days of the Jews of Libya, the, the time of the Six-Day War, when there was a lot of tension in, in Libya, uh, some harassment of the Jews, and this about a lot of fear for a, a full-fledged 
attack on the Jews and so forth. And eventually, it, King Idris uh, told the Jews, essentially, I'm going to get you into a, a camp near the airport. I, I really can't protect you anymore. And I'm not quoting his exact words, obviously. And it, it's really best that, that you begin leave, leave, uh, leaving the country. But aside from the, this main exodus, there was a, a one terrible incident, which is very much engraved in all the Jews who were in Libya, not only Tripoli, where a couple of army officers took two families, 17 people, took them outside of town and simply shot them. 17 people just killed, killed in a cold of blood. And this is, uh, De Felice and everybody else who's written about the Jews of Libya uh, in, in those years uh, mentions this. But about two years ago, on a, there's a website, uh, a, a Google group or whatever you call it, that was set up by the Jews of Libya living in Rome. And it's basically in Italian. But it's, um, uh, a website called Mafrum Per Tutti. Mafrum is yes. a kind of a... Uh, uh, Sort of meat and potatoes, that they're so kind of a patty, and uh, my room for everybody. And I'm, um, I follow it a little bit with, with some basic grasp of Italian, but I, what I'm telling you today, I checked a couple of days ago with Jacques Rumani, who is uh, Maurice's younger brother, something like And um, somebody, somebody came up with the idea of celebrating a holiday which they would call Purim Idrus. Uh, uh, Chaim mentioned this about taking a story of a local victory uh, or a local uh, being rescued from catastrophe. The Jews themselves didn't you know, fight, fight off the tyrants, but they, they were saying, using this, uh, the, the, the the framework of the poem Micha Mocha, and, and actually making a holiday, which, they, which is generally called a local Purim. A Purim is not about the, the Purim holiday from the Book of Esther, but the Purim of our city. And you have these local Purims throughout the Jewish world, I think mainly in the Mediterranean, if I'm not mistaken, but also in Europe, where you, you mark this, this rescue day. And there, there are certain standard kinds of observances. You don't say the the prayers of supplication that you usually say every morning and, and, and so forth. And here we have just two years ago, Jews in, or, uh, in Rome and Milan suggesting that we, we suggest uh, how Idris saved us. And it reminds me of the discussion this morning, how are we to perceive, or how is history to perceive of Muhammad the fifth? Was he helpful? Was he not helpful? Was he neutral and so forth? We don't know. And here you have the majority of the, of the people on the website were, were critical of this, but there was also a strong opinion saying, look, there were some very bad things that happened, but it could have been tremendously worse. And if you look at comparative situations, Idris did his best and got most of us out. And this, uh, th this is a debate which is going today. Now, it hasn't reached publication except on the, on the website. Nobody's written a book, and they didn't come to a decision that they're going to but, but these are also the terms in which it's discussed, the very old, ancient uh, uh, medium of should we have a special day, which they would call Purim Idris. Quick question. Another one that I was wondering about. The, the first is in, in in kind of listing publications. Did, were you in news? I'm wondering what newspaper articles and you know after the war. And not even necessarily published in North Africa, although that as well. But you must be from North Africa. Publishing accounts. Um, my other question with regard to the material that you presented uh, is in, in categorizing things by language to be aware of it in French, in particular, over Algeria, obviously doesn't fit into to be aware of it. Uh, but I'm wondering in, you know, how the difference in language reflects different experiences. Um, and, 
class differences and how all the world's experience experience differently. I mean, because obvi obviously there are also uh, uh, writing for a different audience. And I would say also, I mean, I, I think there's there's a, obviously a difference between, you know, thinking about audience, uh, publications that say that came out in French at the time, or uh, people keeping diaries and so forth, which, which, which you've now published, or other people have published uh, today. So, there, so I'm wondering about how to maybe differentiate you know, between these things and what that says in terms of um, the different remembrance of the, uh, of the warriors. <laughs> I owe you, I know. We promise to remember. <laughs> I remember. Uh, so we're going to collect a few. Uh, Iris and then Sophie. And then, uh, um, were any of these memoirs and diaries written by women? I'm asking because you con so um, because your conclusion was that um, the memories and diaries you are working on reflect collective memory. So I was wondering to which extent is this memory collective if um, women were didn't express themselves at least not in diaries and memoirs. So it's not collective memory. Oh. It's collective memory. <laughs> <laughs> Male collective. This is the collective memory. But unfortunately, So my question is, I mean, I'm thinking in particular about the Algerian case, but do we think that there's potentially a lack of memory, especially in the immediate aftermath, because of fear of repercussion? If there's, you know, you, you mentioned regularly that there's a lack of critique of Vichy. Is there a fear that if they critique Vichy or France, that that will eventually come back to them? And, and I, I was just curious to know about, in this, you know, you're obviously looking at a very specific historical moment, uh, sort of late 40s, early 50s. And to what extent are some of these people in their writings talking about perhaps the situation of Jews in occupied Europe? within their writings. And I ask that only because I've discovered quite recently in some of the very, very small, I'm not even talking about Tunis or Sfax, like some of these very small, smaller towns like Gafs, Sagebes, very early on they were, they were sort of commemorating, I'm sure you already know this, the, the, up, the, the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto. Every year this was being go going on across Tunisia in these very small places. So I'm curious to know whether these sort of commemorative events sort of linked on to other broader uh, processes. They do that in Algeria. As early as that. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I have a, uh, a small comment uh, uh, about uh, the way, uh, I hope you don't mind me, the way you categorize uh, this material. Um, it, it seems to me that uh, uh, when we look at this, uh, this kind of writing, uh, we, we tend to approach it in a very positivist way. Um, if it has direct information about something that we're interested in, if it's very explicit, then we value it. But if it doesn't, then we tend to dismiss it. Uh, I think that's a, 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 another aspect of the amount of material we're de dealing with now as historians. Uh, but however, the, the genre itself speaks uh, a great deal uh, to um, how we should interpret the, the content. For example, the, 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 uh, the Purim uh, of Hitler. Um, these Purims are very important, uh, in the, and the differences among them are very subtle differences. They have a stylized, stereotyped way of presenting the, the redemption theme. Uh, but there are differences in language, uh, if you start to compare them and look, look, look at them, that, um, that are very evocative of a, of a sensibility, of a reaction. Uh, to a historical uh, situation. It may not be uh, overt, it may not be uh, on the surface immediately, but as you as you read it and, and, and compare it with other uh, similar types of literature, you begin to see nuances and differences that I think uh, it can be very revealing. So uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is that not to dismiss uh, these um, um, uh, these other genres of literature that are not so uh, so replete with uh, positivist information, 
but rather that we should be looking at them and looking at them carefully because they may indeed contain um, a nuance that's important for, for our topics. If I could just add to this, of course, there is no uh, Tory in Megillah, it's uh, Esther Megillah. The main protagonist is a woman. So when you have a Hitler Megillah, you are saying something completely different. You're changing the story. And then the question is, what is the story behind? What is behind how, why is it still Purim? Yes. What kind of Purim is it? Like what, what happened to the story and why? And Yaron? So, I have a question of consistency of terms um, across the different countries. There's a description of, say, allied involvement uh, for Jewish community actions to things. Is, do you find a consistency in terminology? Um, is there agreed upon vocabulary? And how much reference is there across these North African contexts? I mean, I know that the lion's share material is from Tunisia, but if you've noted any uh, across these three or four cases. Can you call it the final question? Oh, sorry. Almost final question. Mm -hmm. Just a follow up on the previous question about the genre and the, and the meanings of this genre. And just in Morocco, there were a lot of um, Agada or Puri or, or the celebrated Puri uh, from the uh, Bataille de Trois Rois after the, uh, the main. So there, there is this idea of. Um, of calamities of for the, the Jewish people at large, and, and when they, for the example in the Mimuna, if even if they didn't relate directly to uh, it, to the events of the period, the 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 poem about uh, the trouble of the Jewish people is is there. So there was the genre that you didn't necessarily needed to to mention the specific event by by citing previous texts and by citing um, other events in, in Jewish history, they were reflecting on their current events. So there's a lot of text to look in the Mimuna poems and also um, how Jews related to the, um, the Battle of Three Kings in Morocco and how it echoes in later texts. And, uh, I uh, so I have one question following up on Susan's um, comment about um, if there's a way to ascertain the popularity of VUT and Keynote and some of the other um, images that you put up there, because on one of them there was a price tag on it, and I know that in some of these documents there's also local advertising on the back page and things like that, so we start to get a sense that these things are in wide distribution. And so I'm curious if you could comment on if there's a way to ascertain popularity or if you see these Pew team and other genres referenced in uh, memoirs, diaries, etc. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot. We have a lot of subjects from other conference, from the lecture, but I'm trying to do uh, my best. Uh, for your question, Dan Schultz, about the uh, newspaper, yeah. of course, there is uh, interesting material in the newspaper, and in uh, Algeria, and in the two of the between the youth of Algeria, and in our formation list, but later to the, after the, the, uh, the war, not much, not, not much, but there is uh, some testimonies of Jews, it's often been the, the, uh, in the camps in Tunisia, in the Mishino, and they are describing it, describing it in those newspapers. In this uh, lecture, I try to speak only about those publications, not about newspapers, not about other uh, uh, actions took by the community or by personal people, uh, but by personal to, to uh, try to commemorate the, the, this period, commemorate it to, to, uh, to, to understand what's happening in this period. As you know, in 1948, they built in La Bougel, in the cemetery of La Bougel, a monument that still exists. Uh, for the uh, Jews that were deported from Tunisia to, uh, uh, Nazi, uh, to uh, Nazi Europe, so, and it's still existing. This is part of the commemoration of the events of the war, even uh, in not, but, but not in uh, 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 publications. About the diaries that were not published, I don't know why they were not published. 
I can tell you that the Premahuri was uh, uh, found just by occasion to the conference and someone said, if you are working on this period, my uh, wife had a, a journal, if you want, if it's interesting, you come and take it. And of course, I, I went and, and, and I took it, but I, I may work to at least two more uh, diaries that people don't want to give until this day. I don't know exactly why they don't want uh, to give us the, the, this uh, important uh, document. It's right also a bit that the problem that what we talk, why we don't want to, why didn't we talk about the Holocaust in North Africa until this year, until recent 10 or, or 20 uh, years. I don't know. Uh, sometimes they even don't want uh, to talk about it, but this is part of our uh, work. And unfortunately, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why it didn't uh, publish. It's a very, very important uh, diary, as, as I uh, mentioned. Uh, about the, the language, there was two or three questions about the Judeo Arabic, the language, and what it's uh, 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 implicated in uh, North Africa. I will try to follow Ogaratan, which we all know, and what he uh, did. In his publications about the Judeo Arabic literature, in uh, Tunisia, we tried to follow 100 years of publications in uh, Tunisia, and it took all sorts of publications. And I think that one of the most interesting conclusions that he had in his uh, publications is that Judeo-Arabic was a live a, a, a language that people spoke, and they uh, wrote uh, in literature, yes, in this language. It was not a common uh, language, you know, for those who didn't want, that were not uh, uh, passed on the process of modernization in the uh, French uh, culture. On the contrary, they were French, but they preferred to express themselves in uh, Judeo-Arabic. And there is a lot of uh, publication like this. What is uh, amazing is that those were the as far as I can understand it, there was no much, uh, much more publications in Judeo-Arabic after the war. Yes, the only newspaper that was published in, uh, in Judeo-Arabic was El Najwa, it lasted until 1962, but uh, other lamentations in this, just rare uh, uh, publications that, that uh, were published after the war. I don't, I, for, for Tunisia, even for my, I, I cannot say from this uh, 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 example that this was the end of the Judeo-Arabic in, uh, as a language in North Africa, in Tunisia uh, uh, especially. Uh, uh, for your question, Sophie, if there was a fear to publish those uh, diaries, perhaps it was a fear in this period, yes, after the war. But why they didn't publish it until today? Yes? So if there were much more uh, diaries that written by uh, uh, Algerian Jews or, or Moroccan Jews, yes, uh, during or just after the war, yes, why they didn't publish it till today? Today we are speaking about, uh, we are talking about this subject in, in France, in Israel, and there is uh, the, all the, the committees of compensation for those. Just why why they, they are not speaking about the subject today? Why they are not giving this uh, uh, material? Yes? I, I cannot explain it. So it means that perhaps, or they die and the children don't know that they have it at their house, and it's happened, it's happened, and we know, or they didn't work. I don't, I don't have a, a, any a answer. A, about your question, Daniel, it is a European Jews are mentioned in a, those a, a publications, yes, a, but mainly for the period before the war. The three uh, poems that I uh, mentioned uh, from Tunisia, it's only about regarding Jews in uh, Germany, not Jews in North Africa. It's something, you know, it's something of solidarity with the Jews and with the situation of the Jews in uh, Germany, but not to the Jews in uh, Tunisia. This is a pattern that we, can, we, that we saw in uh, Tunisia, and uh, the, the solidarity with the Jews in uh, Kishinev, in, in, in 1903, and with the Jews of Morocco in 1912, etc., etc. It's a common uh, pattern that we know from other uh, from other uh, events in uh, publication in uh, Tunisia. Uh, regarding your question, Susan, yes, I think that there is a nuance in those uh, uh, publications. Perhaps, as Ori tried uh, to say, you should not mention exactly and directly the events in North Africa to say, look, the suffered as they all suffered. But the question is, the, the, the most impressive thing is that the, the, the descriptions from Morocco, yes, from the Morocco uh, uh, poems, are regarding the war, as a war. 
not about suffering of Jews in Europe from the war. Okay, so they are speaking about the war as a general phenomena, yes, as something very important because it was important to the Jews of Morocco. Okay, because it's changed the, the, the life of the Jews of uh, uh, Morocco. And about the, the, uh, the, consist, the cons, uh, consistency in, in the terms, in the terminology, terminology in those lamentations, I, on those poems, I, I cannot say exactly, I'm not reading the Judeo Arabic, yes, but for, as far as I uh, know, we have a, 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 a one scholar that made a, a very important uh, research for us and try to understand the language of those uh, poems. And, and there, there, is, there is very interesting uh, 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 linguistic problem or linguistic aspects in those lamentations, but I'm, I'm a specialist in this, I can, so I cannot tell you about the terminology uh, that, that was written. Something about uh, Libya, I think that what is about Libya is that Libyan Jews don't have a tradition of writing not rabbinical literature, not newspaper, not uh, songs, not lamentation. There is, from quantity, the amount of, of, of rabbinical publication that we have from uh, Libya, from newspaper that we have from Libya, is relatively to Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria, is the most, uh, the, the, the less uh, publication that we have from this uh, country. I don't, I cannot explain it, I don't know uh, why, but is it, perhaps we have a, a lot of, uh, of uh, expression that were, or, or publication that were written by a Jewish soldier that came from Palestine at that time, yes, and described the situation of the Jewish community. This is another uh, uh, story, this is another aspect of the, the, the research, but uh, it's so huge. Work. Just one chapter in, in, in the whole uh, work, in the whole book like, like this. Uh, did the publication where uh, 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 was advertising in those publications, as far as, far as I know, no, no, not in those publications. There was no, that's nothing, not advertising, and I don't know if they were uh, sell, uh, if there was a price uh, uh, to, to buy them in the, in the stores, I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't check this point, it's very interesting, I will uh, check it. I think it answered the question. <laughs> 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 What was the target? This project is, of course, part of what the Glen Conference offered us, offered the Glen Institute to build this uh, project, to create this project. And what we try is, first of all, to, to, uh, to create an accessible website in Hebrew, English, and French. We hope to do it also in Arabic, but it will take time. Uh, to work through the media, the new media, uh, the Facebook in Hebrew, English, and here in Arabic, we'll show you later, to collect material, document, testimony from all the, all the way regarding uh, the, the, the subjects, to create a database that I will show you in uh, a minute, uh, to organize conferences, local and international conferences regarding these subjects. And we had a lot of uh, uh, of conferences like uh, this, uh, to prepare educational materials to the high school's uh, uh, pupils, uh, to encourage research as much as uh, we can, 
to publish material as we did in the Kuri uh, uh, book. And we have also the, the special volumes of uh, Pami. Pami is the, uh, we mentioned it this morning by Susan that it's only in uh, in Guar, unfortunately, but we really don't have the enough money to, to translate. Very important, but, but very yes, important. Yes, and this is a special issue uh, regarding good. North African Jews during yeah. the Second World War. This new article, new research that uh, we published especially for this uh, 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 special edition of the of Bami. The last time that was some that Ben uh, Smith to publish in Bami something uh, parallel was in the in, uh, 80s. It's a right yes, okay. uh, in, in 87, but we took 30 years to publish another uh, volume. And to be as far as, as can as can we do a uh, professional authority on uh, the subject and what we talked about this morning to, to, uh, to make the, the public to be more awareness to the subject because of all problems that was also work uh, it was uh, this morning. This is some of the conference that we uh, organized during uh, the years. One of the most important was the, uh, the Yad Vashem and the Ben Svi Institute corporations to the, to the conference that we organized in 2008 in uh, Ben Svi uh, Institute. And then the workshops that we organized first in the Holocaust uh, Museum. We have the photos, it was the first time that scholars from North Africa came to Washington to participate in the Holocaust Museum in uh, uh, you remember those photos? Why did you choose that picture of me right there? Those are the different pictures. Why did you choose that picture? Did you go to the next picture or no? So, the pajama data is shorts? Yeah, and me and the pajama. In the evening, we work like this. We have special we have special events during these uh, workshops with uh, Robert Sartoff, with Sarah Blumenfeld regarding the, uh, the project we are, that we are uh, launching. It was a very, very important and interesting uh, conference in, uh, in... This is you against uh, Omar. Why? I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's a memory. So I am trying to forget. So it's, it's really something that we are trying to do. To do. We, we organized some uh, uh, workshops uh, regarding a special topic it was in here in the Hebrew University with the uh, Institute of Contemporary Jewry regarding leaderships during Second World War in uh, North uh, Africa. We have a, a special events, a conference in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Paris, in Memorial de la Shoah. In Paris, it was the first time that they organized since their beginning. It's all the first time that they organized a, work, a, a conference regarding Jews in North Africa during the uh, second World uh, War. So the importance of those conferences, and we, uh, and we are seeing it uh, during this uh, workshop, is really to advance the research and we see how large is the research and how much do we, do we have to continue and, uh, to work about the subject, to try to unify a group of scholars, to encourage archives to open new files, and there is a lot to be uh, open. We talked about, uh, we mentioned uh, the manner of these and what they have in their stores. I think that the material, the documents that they did, they, they couldn't open till yet, are more impressive than what they could open uh, until today, and to promoting the awareness of the subjects. As we said, we have two publications, Parami and the Diary of Klima uh, Khoui. Uh, With the Memorial de la Shoah, we are going to publish a special uh, number of reviews, Histoire de la Shoah, regarding Jews in all Muslim uh, lands uh, during the period of uh, la Shoah. And I hope that we are going to publish with Dan Mehman uh, uh, the proceeding of the conference that we organized in 2008. It's time, I'm sorry, but we will, go, we will uh, publish it. I think that we will uh, reach the final uh, uh, stage of these publications. In the Facebook, I think that it's amazing. Now, do you want to continue from here? We'll have something on. Okay. Uh, uh, in the facing book, this is something new that we are uh, uh, preparing, uh, that we are working now. We have uh, some posts that we are uh, putting on the, the Facebook. It's mainly Tamar and, uh, and uh, William. And we can see all the people that reach those uh, uh, pages of Facebook. And it's regarding uh, different uh, subjects. Uh, for example, this is uh, the uh, 
the history. We are sharing the same history. This was your history and Jews history the same as uh, uh, the, the same history as it was the history of the Jews in North Africa. Regarding, of course, Muhammad V, one of our collaborators, or Jews for the nation, for the nation, we just talked about it, and it has more than 300,000 of uh, people that reached this uh, 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 post, and more than uh, and about 500 that make likes and comment uh, about this uh, subject. It's very interesting. I know that there was with some negative uh, reactions, but it's, uh, it's, it's good for us. It's, it's good that we are speaking about the subjects, about the... Uh, the Hi, I just want to add something. Uh, most of the comments that we uh, receive are in height. Uh, you can see it, but we do have a lot of comments from Muslims, from Arab, Arab countries. I just want to say the countries that we have reached, uh, the leading countries, are uh, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt, Jordan, and Israel, the West Bank. And um, we have many comments from Libya, uh, from Morocco. Um, they share their stories, their grandfather's stories with us, pictures, uh, other materials, and that's the main target, to hear their side of the story, and that they will learn more about their past and the history of the Jewish communities and uh, the relations between Jews and Muslims during this period. So, yeah, also. <laughs> so we, we started with the French page, and we have also Twitter. We started with the French page, and we uh, realized that most of the comments were from Muslims. So we decided to open another page in Arabic and to bring also the topic to other um, people that they don't speak French, of course. And as you can see, and it's quite new, uh, the Arab page is uh, growing up all the time. And I think that it will be the first page in, uh, soon. And um, unfortunately, in English, we don't, have, uh, we don't have a lot of comments and interest, but in French and Arabic, we do. And we also have... Um, discussions between Jews and Muslims, uh, for example, about the pogrom in Constantine, what happened there, or for example, about uh, Muslims who joined the army uh, and fought with the Gramacht or with the Allied, and um, we are trying to um, to discuss, sometimes it's not so uh, quiet and nice, but we do have, um, uh, we do have important comments, and also, um, we hear about new materials that uh, we, we are not able to, to hear about from uh, the website and from our research here, and that's a way to to get there. We get also to the question of gender, come up, please continue. <laughs> so, uh, even though that in uh, Facebook, usually, um, it's um, more or less 50-50, women and men, and 60, 56. 56, okay. So um, in Arabic we have 82 um, men comparing to 18 women. And, and I have to say that um, this is quite different from uh, the Facebook details that we have about the general interest in Facebook in the, Arab, in the Arabic world. Usually there are more women that are uh, uh, interested in Facebook and Twitter and less men, but in our page there are more men that they're interested in this subject. What is the title of the page? I will give you a minute. Okay. Oh, we'll give you a minute. And in French, it's, it's not so much like in Arabic, but also you can see it's uh, 69 and only 31 uh, women. Okay, uh, I want to show you just for two months. <laughs> and okay. you, you're almost invited to to, this is to give us your like. <laughs> in all the this pages. This is our website, we have it in Hebrew, in oh, English, you. and in French, and we say. And I think that the most uh, impressive is the, the, data, the database that we created. I hope it will work. Okay. So you can choose it by keywords, something that you want, that you want to see. You know that we have about 2,500 pages uh, that we put on the uh, documents that we put on the website. Uh, sometimes uh, one document can be more than 100 pages. And that means that we have thousands of pages on this website. Unfortunately, we don't have the permission from the archives to publish all the files. So what we are trying to do, not to go to legal problem with the archive, is to publish what we think that will not be a problem to the uh, uh, archives. 
but to give information that is, if it's important, to give the information that in such and such archive you can find material regarding this and this uh, problem in a minute season. So if we take, for example, uh, Morocco. I just want to say that um, we have not only files, but also photos, maps, testimonies, um, documents, and uh, different materials, not only documents. What? Okay, we take Morocco, Casablanca, and we said search. <laughs> okay, no, no, okay. So we have now uh, about uh, 387 uh, 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 items. We have, we have about 400 items regarding Casablanca and uh, Morocco. And for example, if we take it in, here, we can have the, the documents. This is public access? Uh, yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Uh, what is your relationship with the claims conference? What? What is your support? They are supporting us. They're supporting you, but in what sense? Do you have the the material that has been supported? No, 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 no. Yeah. Only financing. No. So, for example, here you can have the, the document, but not every time you can have the document. Only money. Okay. So you can find here. Uh, that's what we are trying to do with all the stuff yeah. that we have every day to put more and more materials on our uh, website. But you have to put it on the Arabic website. No, I'm asking you. We have, we have bibliography, a very important bibliography on the website. We have digital materials that you can find. Uh, here, for example, this is one of our conferences. This is the international conference with the Association to organize in uh, 2012 regarding uh, uh, the year of 1942 as a turning point in the world. I don't know if you have here. No, okay. This is Anthony Giver lecture. So you can find him more than uh, 30 uh, lectures that were given in our uh, center or in our uh, 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 works. Uh, we have uh, educational material, for example, we have a whole lot The war story of Algeria in Libya. As in, well, I'm not sure you know, like a bit. So I try to give the story of, just a short story of, of the work with connections to our uh, uh, website. Uh, the database, the war story, the events that we are organizing uh, in the Hebrew website. We have a special unit that we uh, prepare for. Show in a minute. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, we put special units for the uh, high school's uh, pupils in, in, in Israel, and this is something that really very interesting. We worked about it one year with the what they call the institution for uh, uh, technological uh, education materials uh, in uh, in Ramatabi. Very interesting. So we are. Uh, uh, just if you want to come, if you want to see what we are doing in our little room in the project, in the Bank Institute, you are welcome. They will try to help you. Unfortunately, we cannot uh, give all the material that we uh, collected in the, the archive. It's a huge material. Why, that we is wrote. why we cannot consult the material that you collected? Because because it's it a legal is, problem? Because of the legal problem. Because we took it when we are going to uh, archive, if we say that we are taking it to publish it in our website, they will not permit us to take to make photocopies of the documents. So we are photocopying and we are putting on the website only what we think is really uh, important. Yeah. Yeah. So because for what I know for the, the nuns, they do allow you to, to enable scholars. If you, you, you took yourself the documents, you can enable other scholars to, to see. Of course, that's not against the law. Yeah. No, no.
You can use it for your own terms. But for scholarly terms, you can give it personally to other scholars. You cannot make the difference between who is coming, if he's a scholar or no, whether you can take it or no. Sometimes there is a lot of newspaper, of capture of newspapers in those files. And it's very, very important. So we're trying to put them on the website because you can say that we took it from the special GVN, it's not a problem, and you don't show, you don't need to show the, the special uh, files in the, in the, the and, and there is a lot of newspapers like this that are not, you cannot find it in the, even in the archives uh, today because it seems that all, it's, it's also what the French thought when they collected those uh, capture of, uh, of a newspaper. But there is a lot, there is a lot of work. So I, let's say I'm interested in a particular document and I go to the, the institute, would I be able to photocopy it using my own camera or not? Depends where the material is from. For example, we found uh, we, are, we, are, we are the only one who have the, the only newspaper that appeared during the last occupation of Tunisia, Tunis Journal. Yes, we bought it from a, 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 a private collector in, a, in Paris. Yes, you can make photocopies if you want to, to see it. Yes, we have the great collective of uh, Benazara. Yes, it is very important. It's also on the web, but you can also, if you want to take photocopies from this, this is our private collections. You can uh, you can take it. We have some other private collections that we have from other uh, 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 private uh, persons that gave to us, so we can offer you to, to see it, of course, yes, but when it's come to uh, uh, collections from archives, the, the photocopies that we made in the archives, it's more complicated, it's more complicated because, you know, today with all the, the uh, laws about privacy in the, in the European Union, etc., et it's very, very complicated, so we are trying to put uh, at least an indication that there is such and such material and if, you, if you want to do it. For example, uh, uh, on Thursday a lawyer called me and said that he saw about uh, the list of the names of Jews that were at the camp of Bizet uh, and he needed for a, a process that is conducted uh, against the, the Germans. Can we give him the, the documents? So that's, we can do it, we can do it, okay? But this is for one document for a bigger uh, file. But, but it goes against the idea of the, of the website itself. Well, if it's on the website, you can see it, of course. Okay. But For example, but the Quakers, the, 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 the collections of the Quakers, they gave us an approval to put it online. So you can see all the collection online. But Look, if we have other materials that we don't have a permission from the archives to put it online, to upload it, so no, we no, can't put talking, it. I'm not talking about the project, what you, but the whole institute itself, what the other collections that they have. So if you are the collections, access, yes, of the course. Collections, yeah. you can the watch and you can take a photo of the there collections. A lot if it's of, yes, of course, of course. But if, course, it's, course. Uh, if we have other materials that we don't have the rights to go, to give it to others or to 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 give you a photo of that, so we have a little. We, we really have to we really have to close okay. because it's almost tomorrow and tomorrow we have a lot to do. Maybe <laughs> uh, so you can just show us the yeah, yes, you can have, this. Yeah, this is for example just this is a one hundred pages I think a whole, uh, a whole, 97, pages. 97 pages of of a, a, a diary of a special units in Libya and a soldier, a Jewish soldier wrote this uh, uh, diary, uh, a special school. Uh, you have the, the access you have in the Brochure that we uh, gave to you, you have the, the, uh, the, address of the link to our website. And so if we contact, for example, the, the Holocaust Museum and ask them permission to use the thing that But the Holocaust is Museum, is, Holocaust museum is doing what they are doing, is taking photocopies from all the other in, in the world. And they get, yeah. and they get yeah. us the uh, documents, right? So, no, gave us to, to, to our project. Sometimes, yes, sometimes it's good. Yes. I, I do maybe in my you know, little bit of at the Holocaust Museum, they they negotiated well, with all kinds of everything. With everything you, you know, because these are usually government related, often complicated legal issues, but usually they. They'll, once they've concluded a negotiation, then 
part of the deal might be they can't put they can't put things on the, the web online. except online except online, if they get. I'm the, talking about coming to Yadetsky uh, and to see the documents. Right. And then, so if, then so then depends. if you're it's a user, yes. anyone can go use it and then they allow you to take. So you can share it with anybody. Personal. You, you just have to be. You know, correct in the attribution. Yes, of right? course. Yes. The ethics. Right. So, so it's sort of a control. They have a certain controlled environment that the public is coming, but if they're on there, they can use it. And so it's you just can't put it on one. Yes, yes. And they're they're rather scrupulous. You know, they have their whole legal yes. team, so that they don't get in trouble. With the, with the so thank, thank you very much for your Take you back to Big Man Store. Thank you back.